Ya. Sahana Bhagavatu Sahana Nagpati Sahabhiyam Arvavahe Tejasvina Vadita Mastuma Vidhvishavahe Shanti 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 Hare Guru Sri Guru Guru Hare Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Reva Param Brahma Tasmai Sri Gurave Vasudeva Sutam Devam Sata Mura Maddhanam Devaki Paramahandam Vishnam Bandi Jagadu Samastha Janakalyani Niratam Karunamayam Namami Chinmayam Devam Sadhu Brahmavitvayam Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnamad Purnam Purnasya Purnamakamaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Sarihivu Sarihivu A quick rush through what all happened because is connected to the other. We should know the sequence. All of us are interested in avoiding death and sorrow, gaining bliss and immortality. Whether you know these names or not, even the Ignorant man is only going for these things. Either he is a sinner. Motives are the same. Wants to live forever. Don't want sorrow. Want happiness. Demands are very reasonable. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, Janaki's videos come from yours. Is huh? The demands are very reasonable, but the solution we are seeking, where it is not there. In Mount Road, one day I saw a old woman 50 years back. In the night, I used to go in those days Nights, night shows and all that. So when I, I saw a old lady searching everywhere, night one o'clock, I stopped the car and asked her, Rama, she says, I lost my pin. So I asked her, where did you do, Sama? At my house. Then why are you searching here? At my house, there is no light. You lost somewhere, but there is no light. You are searching where there is light. Similarly, we have lost our immortality, happiness, and searching things. Because you see this. Absolutely, there is nothing wrong. But you see the problems. 
In fact, last class I said, put Maya, an ordinary man, what is the hold for him to live? Supposing there is no Maya, no attraction, no, no, no TV, no cinema, something to hold on. How will an ordinary man go through his life, his routine life? So you need it. But the problem, you see, this you must all know is what you like. Something you have a value that alone gives you sorrow. That therefore gives me. Why don't you like that? Because you like the opposite of it. You like the opposite of it. This opposite can never be separated. You like something, you must dislike the opposite of it because the whole world is opposites. If you like something, you must dislike something. So you never, never you can have peace from what all you like. There can only be agitations. Right? Even satsang. From yesterday, I put it in the group also today. In the car also, I told him. You know, the most, this Gurudev said and others also said, the most period in one's spiritual life is when he has evolved to the highest. What happened is, he somehow withdrew from the outside world and started complete identification with the spiritual life. As he evolves, he finds even that is Maya. Now what will he hold on? Horrible life. It is at that time, God takes pity. I put the same words in my group. He says, I myself cannot stand this sorrow anymore. Because he was and now suffering. So he opens the door and you go in. But that's a terrible state. The last stage of development. Because even the God that you think will you, you find even that is an illusion. Right? So what do, what will you depend on? Shastra says, if something you have to get from something, through effort, cause and effect, time and space, it has to be finite you need is what you are demanding is infinite. It cannot be a product of time and space, cause and effect and through effort. <clears throat> it has to be there all the time. The thing is, you somehow are not exposed to it. God is so kind for all these, our daily he gave examples. That highest happiness when you sleep, every day you experience. Every day you experience. So it's not that it's not known to you. It's known to you, but on getting up, again, your mind becomes extrovert. This world of forms covers the real you covers the real you. That's called avarana. Avarana. Due to it brings uh, simultaneous. See, the one problem of this uh, uh, where many things are simultaneous. You try to dissect this first or that first. It doesn't happen in reality. God doesn't have to wait there, sit there. First I will create akasha. Then I will create Vayu. Then I will create fire. Tanmatras. 
After that, I will make Maya mix and Panchi Karana. He doesn't have to do his Sankalpa, it will happen at the time. He doesn't have to do all that. But we try to rationalize them and try to even fight. You know, for example, the Pranamaya Kosha plays with both gross and subtle bodies. It comes in between. There are people fighting over it. Pranamaya Kosha is gross or subtle. This so, so beautifully says, whatever it is, both grass and subtle, it comes, the same topic comes. Graha, Ati Graha. Graha, Graha. Murti, Amurti. All these are false. Their expressions are the one real. Why are you getting involved into that? Now let me tell you something what you can verify. Your life or our life, you get moments of happiness, moments of sorrow. Happiness has come after some time sorrow comes, that means happiness has gone. Sorrow came, it has gone. Now, who experienced this both? Happiness has gone. If you are happiness, you have also gone. When? Sorrow has come. Who is there to receive? Who is there to experience? Come in you. They stay in you. They merge in you or leave you. It was dream experiences. Different things come, different things go. But you are not gone with them. You have not gone with them. So this whole duality, which is inseparable, the plane of duality, a value for honor, you cannot escape dishonor. When you have a value for comfort, you cannot escape pain. When you have a value for Deathlessness, you cannot escape death. Right? They go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. But they come and go. But you experience them, you have not gone with them. When, please, I may be repeating this third class, third time. I may do this for 15 classes. All the 15 times I will repeat this only because this is all you have to know. You understand? This is all you have to know. I will repeat this only. And if you want to stop, you can stop because. Right? So the happiness and sorrow are interdependent. Be in total exclusion. They come and go. You have experienced both, but you have not gone with them, nor come and sorrow or experience or experience by your mind. In sleep, Mind is not there. You don't experience happiness and sorrow. Were you nothing? If you are nothing, you won't go. You go to sleep because you and temporarily forget your joys and sorrows. I, 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 I had a good sleep. I enjoyed it, you say, positive. So in sleep, when the mind is not there, you are total bliss and Brahman. Right? Now, my the duality comes and goes. You don't come and go. And you are full and complete and happy. You don't change. That which doesn't change is immortal. That which changes 
right? That which changes is mortal. So the mind is mortal. That's why it's called Maya. That's why it's called myth. That's why it's called death. Hiranyagarbha, this Upanishad is going to say, Hiranyagarbha is death. Because it changes. Whatever changes on the principle of death. Whatever changes, previous condition gone, new condition has come. So birth and death. So that is mind. That experiences the duality. In sleep, that is not there. In sleep, you are blissful. So you can't be the mind that comes and goes. Your own object. You are the subject which never comes and goes. Because subject never comes and goes. Objects come and go. Subject is one. Objects. Right? All sorrow, therefore, belongs to the mind. You are not the mind. They are seen as objects. You are the seer. You are the seer. So, Avarana, you don't dream. Normal people, some people can dream in the class also. But normal people can't dream without sleep, going to sleep. So, Avarana brings vikshepa. Covering brings vikshepa. Dream is vikshepa. Avarana of my spiritual nature brings in this manifold world, this manifold world, me alone, the vikshepa. So, the world torments you First, you see its reality. It's only my projection of my mind, dream. Not only this projection of mind, its joys and sorrows are projection of the mind. Third, mind comes and goes, I am constant. Mind. Then what are you worrying? What are you worrying? Just say, I am not the mind and keep quiet. Nothing to do. Oh, mind will not leave me. Don't worry. You just know it is mine. Mind will not leave me. It need not leave you. You just say it is my mind. It's worried. That's its nature. Let it enjoy. Why should I interfere with that? Why should I interfere with the mind? It's not none of my business. Right? Because as long as you Believe mind is real and try to do something, it only becomes strong. That was the story in Rama killing Bali from an angle, not straight. Because Rama is the uncontrolled mind. An uncontrolled mind, when you face it face to face, it becomes stronger. Because with what are you trying to calm the mind? With the mind. Ramana Bhagavan gives a beautiful example. You ask the thief, not knowing he is the thief, to show the locations of the thief. He will show you everything else other than the real place. Because he himself is the thief. That's the mind. So, Avarana and Vichyapa. Now, all the time, we are going on explaining the problem and some basics of solution. But when am I going to experience? When am I going to experience? I told you, all this duality comes and goes. You are not conscious. You are, when you are dreaming, in the dream it happens, but you are not conscious. In sleep they are not there, so therefore you are not conscious. In waking, it's nothing but an extension of the dream. Waking is nothing but an extension of your dream. So when are you going to experience this? I am not the mind. You have to first objectify the mind. 
and see the seer in you. For that, the simple exercise I tell is just watch your thoughts. Mano Vikshanam, Prana Vikshanam are the two exercises given as the seer and the see. But for a person who is too much gross involved in the material experiences, he cannot detach to watch also. So what has to be done? It's that's where this Vupasana excels. Ashwamedha Vupasana is the Vupasana in Rudharana Gopanishad. It simply excels. It says you don't dismiss the world. In fact, you bring him more things into your mind. Watch them. You watch your friend, you watch your enemy, you watch Chennai, you watch America, you watch floods, you watch, you know, no water. You watch all things. What all you can imagine, bring it to your mind. Watch. There should not be anything left. Total Vishwa should come into that. That's called Virata. All possibilities of names and forms should come into your mind. Now consciously when you are doing this, when consciously you are doing this, you are now conscious of yourself who is bringing them there. The seer and the seer. Because you, are, you become conscious, you are bringing them into your mind. So you become conscious of yourself, the seer and the seen. And when you go on contemplating some more, you suddenly realize, this is all my mind. This is all my mind. And just get up. This is what Brahmaji does. As Virat, he imagines everything and finally says, this is all my mind. What am I afraid of? So this is all my mind, this whole world. That is where the Sashramedha Yaga Upasana is excellent because as you are visualizing, you get the experience, the seer and the seen. This is all my mind. The whole objective mind, the world dissolves in you. The objective world is the Virata Purusha dissolves in you that is offered unto you because Yaga, Yajna, it has to be offered. The objective world is offered into you, merges into you. The objective world is me, my mind. My mind is offered to myself, offering the self to the self, offering the self to the self. Other offerings are offering a goat and all that are for gods. What for gods? You offer goats and all that? Yes, they need, they are hungry. You, you'll, you'll come, when I come to the this thing, that's why every day in every temple, Prana Pratishta is done, Bali has to be given. In every temple, if the temple Prana Pratishta is done, Bali has to be given, they are hungry. You have to give them Naivedya. Otherwise, they will kill you. Understand? I'll come to that topic when I come. Now my main aim is the main Upasana here is Ashwamedha. How it works, I wanted to show you. Because you are consciously bringing, bringing the world and therefore you become conscious of it and yourself. In that, the knowledge suddenly dawns, it's me only. In that, that lower self of yours, the mind is offered into you, the real self. That's how the Ashwamedha works, the Vupasana. And the same Ashwamedha for us to contemplate. He takes same principles in different manifestations, fire, 
and then Purusha himself, Vish Vishwarupa Darshan we, we see in 11th chapter, and Purusha Suktam also. Abadnan Purusham Pasham. This very Purusha is tied and offered. Right? That's it, Ashwamedha. The very Purusha is tied and offered. So, it goes into several various ways of doing this Hiranyagarbha Upasana. Right? And what is excellent about this? Such a simple principle of trying to invoke God in a particular thing. Why are you complicated? Because, after all, Krama Mukti is Karma plus Upasana, rituals and meditation. That's Krama Mukti. I do puja and all that. I do service all my life. I make it a service to God. So that's Karma. Upasana, I worship him, I pray him. What more you want? Why, why are you bringing these complex topics of Ashramedha, fire and what, prana and all that, Purusha Supta, complex topics, why are you bringing? See, those things may be easier, but you don't get the results. This may be little, apparently complicated, but when you try to meditate on this, you immediately feel the sea and the sea. That's what today in my group I put, right? The beauty of Buddha and Aka is simple things made as though complex. When you contemplate, it appears the highest, even ultimate, so easy and simple. Even the highest, so simple and easy. That's the beauty of Buddha and Aka. This Upanishad has three sections. Three sections. Because we said you cannot gain this infinite through actions, through cause and effect and all that. How will you gain? What is there everywhere can be gained only through knowledge. It can only be gained through knowledge. What what sort of knowledge is that? I also told you in the very first class, Aparavidya and Paravidya. Right? This Paravidya is Upanishad. They, are also, they also don't give you the wisdom. Knowledge is different, wisdom is different. Upanishads also are Aparavidya and Mundaka Upanishad. They are pointers. They they are pointers. What is a pointer? It says there, Harrington wrote 13th Avenue. 13th Avenue is not in that boat. If you stay there, you will never reach. You have seen that, leave it and come. So are the pointers. The pointers point you out something. Leave the pointer and reach the pointed. So this Upanishads, are pointers to up to you. The most humiliating thing in the world, I know everything about everything, but not about me. This is the most humiliating. Right? Artificial intelligence for everything. They can make Swami Chinmayan and you speak. They've done it. They put it in the groups also. Suppose Mara speak, they did it. Artificial, right? we can do everything. Not only that, share business, you can use it. Artificial intelligence. How it will go, how it will come. Cricket, you can use it. So much has come. But the more they come, the more you have problems, the more you have disturbance. Understand? Do you leave all that? Don't. No. Use them, but don't allow yourself to be used by them. Maintain your independence. The whole world goes, so what? I don't need it. God will desert you. I don't need God. Must come to that state. 
I don't need God. Because when you say I need God, what is the difference between a man who says I need money? Both are dependent. I, I depend on his mercy. I depend on his mercy. And you see, it's very interesting because I try to live this. So I have contemplated a lot. So this is very important. God's love is conditional. He tries to protect somebody who surrenders to him. Somebody who is pure. Pure, he has to surrender to him. Right? Who does sadhana? God's love is conditioned. Guru's love is unconditioned. Guru's love, unconditioned. The more somebody is a rogue, the more attention he gives to him. Because he needs him. He needs him. He doesn't see somebody is good or bad. God sees your karma. According to your karma, only he can give the results. Govardhana episode in Bhagavatam. Krishna says, why are you worshipping Indra? He cannot deny what is due to you to, according to your karma. Nor can he give you something for which you have not done karma. Krishna says in Govardhana Giri episode. So, God gives things according to your karma, according to your purity, according to your surrender, according to your sadhana. Guru doesn't. See, now you have to ask me a question. So, Guru and God are different. You may say, Tvameva Mata Chapita Chatvameva Tvameva Bandhus Chatsakha Tvameva Tomeva vidya dravinam tomeva tomeva sarvam mama deva deva. God of gods, you say. So are they different? No. Then see how many confusions I am creating. I am creating more confusions than answers. But if you follow me, all your confusions will go. Then is God, is God and Guru different? No, Guru is God. Then why? You say sometimes his love is conditioned, sometimes his love is unconditioned. Right? How? Because God alone being there, God alone being there, the stone is God, the plant is God, the animal is God, the Rakshasa is God, the Deva is God. The saint, the sinner, all are gods. He manifests according to the equipment. So, the best form of his is in Guru. The best expression of him is in the Guru. Right? Because Guru is totally unconditional. So why, why did I bring the topic? I should not forget. Why did I bring? You don't need even God. Because when you come to that stage, he says there is no difference between you and me. I also don't need anything. You also don't need anything. Now you are me. Right? You are me. I don't need anything. Bhagavatam goes on telling everywhere. A devotee says, I don't need anything. I don't need moksha. I don't need anything. I only want total devotion to you. Love to you. I don't want anything else. Is that conditional? No. I already recognized his love. Having recognized his love for all, I just want to be grateful to him. That's all I want to be. Just want to be grateful to him. So you have to evolve to this stage of independence. That's called moksha. But that cannot be done easily. So you need a prop. The prop is God. The prop is 
hold on to the prop. Everything else moves off. And when everything else moves off, you find even he is an illusion. Gurudev said, I put it in the group today, I am repeating it. That's the worst stage for a sadhak, just before the last experience. He has negated everything, but he held on to God, and he finds even God is an illusion. Now, what is you? It's at that time God says, Enough, and enough is enough. My child has suffered enough. He opens the door. He opens the door. You merge in him. You merge in him. You understand? Why am I saying this? This is the beauty of Gurudhar Nakupanashti. He will explain to you every Upasana as if it is very important. He will explain to you the God with form and God without form. He will explain to you the glory of Hiranyagarbha as prana and fire. He will explain to you various things. But never does he forget for a split second to caution you, these are all finite. These are all finite. At every stage he cautions you. Then why did you explain them to me? Two reasons. One is, I can only take you from known to unknown. One reason. Second reason, you are not fit to leave all at once. So go through this process. In this duality, hold on to that which is favorable. So that you can leave the other thing. And come to a point where you are face to face with God. So that's the Upasana. So, Brudar and Kopanisha, the gives a lot of importance like Chandogya Chandu also through Upasanas. So many people hastily, when they read this Upanishad, close it in five minutes, I, these are all Upasanas, I can't understand. And Brother and Chandukya, you have not seen even many teachers teaching. Even when they teach, they only teach the favorite topics like Atmanastukamaya Sarvam Priyam Bhavati. Right? And then Antaryami. Like this, there are a few things which they teach. You, you hear the uh, YouTube. Best of teachers have left many things only teach this. Because they feel Brudharika is all this. No, no, no. It's so beautiful and kind. He takes you step by step, makes you know that and makes you also feel it's finite. There is infinite supporting it. Where the finite is there, it is supported by the very infinite. Look at that. Look at that. Where the world I have got by my Vipassana Virat Purusha, it's supported by me, the consciousness. My dream is supported by me, the consciousness. My agitations are supported by me, the consciousness. Brudharinika does it beautifully and artistically. So people hastily, without reading, just say it's all too difficult and all Vipassanas. No. The style in which he gives is very compassionate. More strange than that is the, is Sri Shankara keeping up the same spirit. Even more beautiful than that, the English translator Sri Swami Madhvananda maintains the same spirit. <coughs> so this Upanishad, I, I told you, it's through knowledge. What knowledge? Personal experience through pointers. Through pointers of the Upanishads. These pointers again are twofold. One is Swarupa Lakshana. Another is Inasar Lakshana Marnupachi, old age. Old age. Tatasta Lakshana. Tatasta Lakshana. Swarupa Lakshana, Tatasta Lakshana. Tatasta Lakshana. 
somebody is a joke, but happened. Four years back, they went to Salem. There was a road roller before the house. So next, after four years, when they go, they are searching for the roller to look at the house. Tatastha Lakshana. Normal example is housing board houses, all are same. You want to locate your friends. So you show him, you see the crow there. That house, that yellow house below the crow, you have seen. Now the crow can fly, but you will know the house. Crow can fly, you, can, you will know the house. That's called Tatastha Lakshana. Gurudev says indicative definitions. Indicative definitions. From whom the world arises, in whom the world stays, into whom the world merges. Difficult, simple, from where your thought rises, where your thought is maintained, where your thought merges, indicating definition, that is selection. Right? That is the Sarupa Lakshana, Satyam Nana Manantam Brahma. Right? This is Swarupa Lakshana. After some time, they themselves are compassionate. They say, even Swarupa Lakshana is a Tatastha Lakshana, only relative. Only relative. So what is the real Brahman? Through these pointers, what you experience inside. What you experience inside. That's called Upanishad. What you experience is the Upanishad. This is only Akshara Brahma. It is only Akshara Brahma. Right? So, for this, then what is important? You can't by yourself know, because you can only know with a form. You can only know, you know, these are called means of knowledge. Form. You are there. Just before me, I know him, Pratyaksha. Pratyaksha. As I go, I see smoke coming up. Oh, there is fire. You didn't see fire. But you saw smoke coming up. Wherever there is smoke, there should be fire. Anumana Rakshana. Inference. Then somebody says, you grew fat. No, these days I don't eat at all. Then how did you go fat? That means night severity. Right? That's called Arthapati. It's also Anumana, a type of Arthapati. Yeah, a type of Anumana. Then Upamana is like a tiger. Right? Upamana. Then Anupalabdi. Oh, you are talking like Gandharva Nagara, which doesn't exist, or a sky flower. Uh, right? Vandhyaputra. These are all the examples. Son of a barren woman. Anupalabdi. All these, if you have noticed. Otherwise, go home, make a note, and notice. They are all in the plane of duality. They are all in the plane of duality, with the form and qualities. So Brahman cannot be known through these methods of knowledge. Pratyaksha, Anumana, Anupapati, Upamana, Anupalati. It can only be known through pointers given by the compassionate Guru. It's called Aptavakya. It's called Aptavakya. He just says Tattvamasi. Teacher says, Tattvamasi. Immediately you don't realize you are Tattvamasi. He asked the teacher, Swamiji, I have respect for you. But how can I be that? I am scared of every small thing. I am scared of cockroach. You should see the ladies dancing when they see the cockroaches in the kitchen. It's like Rudra dancing. Cockroaches. Right? I am scared of everything. Cockroaches and my my wife, everything I am scared. 
Bhagavan, everything is scared of him. The sun is scared of him. The vayu is scared of him. Fire is scared of him. How can I be him? I am an alpagna. He is a sarvagna. I am an alpa shaktiman. He is sarva shaktiman. Alpa vyapi. I am only in this limited place. He is sarva vyapi. How can I be him? Guru says, the wave is one devotion are all the same. The way was, how can I be devotion? How can I be devotion? The Guru says, remove the name and the form wave, remove the name and the form ocean, see the essence, what is real in both is water. Remove the name and the form in your concept, the individual, jiva. Remove the name and the form in the concept God. What remains is Brahman. Tat Tvam Asi. Right? Gurudev gives a beautiful example. You had a classmate called Gupta, who were also living in Chennai, and uh, now he's IAS officer in Delhi. After 20 years, you go to Delhi with your wife, you see him in the airport. Hey, hey, you know, I've been talking about Gupta, my best friend. This is that Gupta. This is that Gupta. How can the Gupta in Chennai, who is a student, who has passed in the fourth attempt, be the Gupta in Delhi as an officer, married man? This is that Gupta. Remove all the variables, the Chennai Gupta and the Delhi Gupta. What remains is the Gupta. You understand? So that is how Tattvamasi is understood. And you contemplate and you say, I am Brahmasmi. That is the Mahavakya which comes here. This whole Vedanta is therefore Shabda Pramana. We have negated the five Pramanas. This is the sixth pramana, shabda pramana, no, uh, made known to you through words of the vakya. Shabda pramana. First, you when you listen, the impossibility of such a thing is removed. I don't know. Remove shravana. I don't understand. Remove manana. I don't experience. Removed by Nidhi Vyasana. Right? Srevana Manana Nidhi Vyasana gives you this experience. Right? So that is the glory of this Upanishad, where 10 rupees you won't get without trying to flatter somebody. Here you become God by only knowledge. Don't have to do anything. Only knowledge. All that you get in the world through your efforts is finite, gives you sorrow. The God that you know to yourself to be gives you immortality and bliss. Therefore, first thing in spirituality is Upadesha is Upadesha. This Bhradharanika is divided into three khandas, six chapters. Three khandas, each khanda two chapters, six chapters. Then each chapter has sections, that's called Brahmanas. That's called Brahmanas. Right? So the first is Upadesha. Upadesha is given in Madhukanda. It is given in Madhukanda. The next is Manana. This is Srevana, Manana. Manana is given Muni Kanda. Muni himself means Manana Shilava Muni. Yagnavalkya. He is the Muni who gave. So it says Yagnavalkya Kanda or Muni Kanda. That is Upapatti, thinking, reason, conclusion. The last is experiencing yourself to be that through meditation. Nidhi Jyasana. 
that is called upasana upasana kanda so the first kanda madhu kanda second kanda muni kanda or yagnavarika kanda the last kanda is called kila kanda experience indeed kila means indeed experience right shravana mandalam nidyasana upadesha upapatti and upasana right this is the subject matter of this lovely 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 upanishad brahmacharya it's like karumbu tree you know sugar cane you are afraid of it because you will break your teeth there are ways to peel it off and enjoy the sweetness sugar cane juice good for liver and all that so people who buy the book not even by see it ha ah, this is all leave it they miss the sugar cane juice people who put little effort brother anika is the loveliest because it discusses all other upanishads some of them implications some of them direct some of them through implications some of them direct it discusses other upanishads right i think i've bluffed enough let me see i will now go to the text what is the time good time oh nine minutes at least today i'll start the text उषा वह अश्व मेधस्य शिव सूर्य चक्षु वात प्राण व्या अग्नि वैश्वान संवत्सर आत्माश्व मेधस्य जौहु पृष्ट अंतरक्ष मुदर पृथ्वी दिशा पार्श्व अवांतरदिशा पार्श्व पार्श्व ऋतु अंगा मासा अर्धमासाच्च पर्वाणी अहोरात्रा प्रतिष्ठा नक्षत्रा अस्थिनी अहो मंसा ऊर्ध्व सिकता सिंधव उदा यकृत्क्लोमन क्लोमन पर्वता ओषधय वनस्पति लोमा उद्यन पूर्वाध निम्लोच यजृंभते त विद्युतिमेहतिमेहति <laughs> because the whole thing what i chanted was greek and latin in fact satish took a promise from me i won't deal with these things by words i keep on my promise trying to show how much i can bluff right the, the next verse also aharva ashram urastan mahima mahimam bajayata tasya purve samudre yonihi रात्रि पश्चा महिम अजायत तस्रे समुद्रे योनि ये तो वा अश्व महिमानवता संभूत हयो भूत्वा देवान्वहत आजी गंधर्वान्वासुरा अश्वो मनुष्या समुद्र एवा बंधु समुद्रो योनि the i don't do anything straight i do in a crooked way now i take the second first right the second thing the day verily is the golden cup that is before this rush is the world vishwa golden cup which is bright right and it starts with that which arose in respect of the house its source is the eastern sea it sprang from the eastern sea the has where did from uchchasravasa spring 
ఫ్రమ్ వాటర్స్ ఉంది స్ప్రింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ వాటర్స్ రైట్ ఐ వోంట్ కాంప్రమైజ్ విత్ దాట్ ఐ విల్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ టు యూ వాట్ ఇట్ మీన్స్ ఇస్ ది కప్ ది నైట్ వెరీలీ ఇస్ ది సిల్వర్ కప్ ఇన్ ది ఫ్రంట్ గోల్డెన్ కప్ డే ఇన్ ది నైట్ నైట్ డార్క్ సిల్వర్ కప్ బిహైండ్ which arose in respect of the horse, it sure is the western sea. It sure is the western sea. Verily, these two cups called Mahimam appeared on either side of the horse as a steed it carried the, as a steed it carried the gods, as a star celestial minstrels, as a course of the demons, and as a horse men, they see its stable, they see its source. how can we be grateful to these people the rishis the acharyas who commented and the translators also you see the different horses he has found the corresponding english names right so why did i take the second first because this clearly shows that the entire vishwa and vira is nothing but time and space because the front is the day the front is the day the back is the night and it's in space east west and all so the entire ashwa the virat is nothing but time and space you understand and then why is chosen this this imagine also will carry us to our goal how the ashwa has four different types carry the person to different according capacity whether you are a deva or a gandharva or a rakshasa or a manushya the same ashwa can take you to different goals you understand so that's the impact first it shows it's only right second according to your capacity it can take you to the goal right so, now to do upasana there has to be similarity there has to be similarity that is the first words that is the first words huh, no what all will what all it says hayo bhutva devan when it takes devas it's called haya vaji gandharvan when it takes gandharvas it's called vaji vaji has vajpayi means who has done the ashramada yaga vajpayi arva as when it takes the asuras it's called arva ashwa manushya when it takes human beings it's called ashwa ashwa medha what is it ashwa this arusha these names and forms all products of time and space you through contemplation make it fit for sac- sacrifice that fit for sacrifice is called medha that which is fit for sacrifice is called medha that's why you know something not good you say amedham it means it has to be thrown out so medha is something that is holy fit for sacrifice ashwa here ashwa shwa tomorrow ashwa not tomorrow that which will never stay tomorrow that means the finite world product of time the name virata itself is finite what are you going to do right hiranagarbha virata prajapati all of this ashwa right but you have to contemplate that how you whatever you contemplate that you become mind is man 
whatever you think that you will be mind is so when you contemplate this as virat you become virat when you become virat vira the difference between virat and us we are products maya but we do not know we are products of maya hiranyagarbha and virat they are very conscious they are the masters of the maya they are the masters of the so when you become virat you clearly can see this is all my mind i created it with gross form is called virat with mind projection is called hiranyagarbha total mind is called total mind and so both are same you know virat and hiran so both are conscious so he says this is all my mind i created they are not different from me so he is not afraid because they are me you and i are afraid because we don't have that knowledge not afraid he enjoys the creation you and i suffer because we are victims of maya you understand so here the ashwa is described in the ah ashwasya medesh shira usha dawn again you know time ashwasya shira the head of the horse is usha dawn time surya chakchuhu you know his eyes are the surya vata prana is the vata vyapta agni hi vaishwanara when you open the mouth it's the vaishwanara agni because the of the mouth and the tongue is agni fiery speech fiery speech so much is beautifully that's why in south india everybody talks too much because heat where in himalayas nobody talks because it's too cold right vaishwanaraha aham vaishwanaro bhutva pranyanam deham asritah pranapana samayukta pachamyannam chatubhujam that vaishwanara in you the agni is the virat purusha the hiranyaka who protects you and who is this yeah the rest of the things are similarities you can read at home i don't have to i keep up my promise to satish you this rest at home you don't need them but let me i, I want to say something important he says no half oh, so i won't give you the memory next class you say that he says so i'm not remembering i want to i cut it off suddenly to tell you something but the lord is withholding so we'll see next class okay he will he will let it right ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದಚ್ಯತಿ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತಿ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮ ಹರಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಚಂದ್ರ Thank you, Uncle. Hari Om. Hari Om. Hari Om, everybody. Yeah. Om Shri Chinmaya Satgurave Om Shri Chinmaya Satgurave